Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yeah, I can see. If you just uh, exported it in PDF, maybe it won't be. Yeah. Can you uh, read it comfortably? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. So it is for a few minutes only. Uh, see, uh, we just started the chapter, solid state. Yeah. So basically, what is solid state? So my first question is, uh, I think you have studied about this chapter, right? You have studied this chapter before. Uh, well, no, for uh, this year, I think like solid state, uh, no, I haven't started it in school, no, no. Okay, I started. think it's not in the syllabus of uh, yeah, yeah. this year. No. Okay. So basically, I have a question for solid state. Which fact, uh, you, ha uh, you have seen three physical state, that is solid liquid in and gas in our syllabus. Okay, yeah. so in uh, for gaseous state, you have studied it in class 11 and solid state and liquid state is in class 12. So the first chapter is solid state and we already know about this physical state. The particles in solid state are tightly packed. Yes. They are tightly packed. That means basically the force of attraction between the particles are very high. And yeah. also there are some uh, points that you should know about it. Uh, solids are incompressible because they are already highly compressed. Yes. So the factor which uh, which determine majorly whether a substance should be in solid, liquid, and gas that is basically IMF. That is intermolecular force. Intermolecular force oh. and intermolecular force in solid state is very high. That's why they come together and tightly packed and exist as solid state. And basically, yeah. there will be also vibration or movement of particles. And uh, there is no uh, not movement of particles. That means basically, there is not enough space to migrate from one place to another place. That's why they just oscillate at their mean position. Oscillate, uh, oscillation, you know, vibration, just yes, vibrating. Yes. So basically, uh, this solid state is of two types on the basis of arrangement. On the basis of arrangement, they are, they are of two types, crystalline and amorphous solid. And the difference, uh, the, uh, we should distinguish between this crystalline and amorphous, which is very important. So okay. on the basis, uh, basically there are base on which we are going to divide it. Like uh, if, I'm, uh, if I want to uh, divide the class in two parts, I can 
basically divide it on the basis of gender, on the basis of uh, marks, opt-ent, different yeah. criteria there will be. So basically, the first criteria here, uh, division of solid on the basis of arrangement of particles. So see what is crystalline solid and what is amorphous solid. This crystalline solids, basically, these crystalline solids are in regular, uh, they are regularly arranged. Like if you want to go for an example, if the solid particles are regularly arranged for long range, that is called like this, that is called crystalline solid. And what about amorphous? What about amorphous? Amorphous is uh, basically not long range order. That means they are not orderly arranged. They are uh, arranged orderly for short range order. And after that, the particles are not defined like this. Basically, today, uh, my pen tab only from today. It's not working good. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it is like a short range order. That means some particles are arranged orderly for short range. And after that, the particles are here and there. The okay. particles are here and there. Then <clears throat> it's also important to know that the crystalline solid is also known as true solid. And this amorphous solid is known as pseudo solid or super cooled liquid. Why crystalline solids are true solid? Because they are orderly arranged and the uh, and basically if there is no external agent like pressure or temperature, the particles are arranged together. They don't okay. flow from here to there. But in amorphous solid, it has been seen that the particles of uh, if you want to take an example, you can take an example of iron. Just take an iron, uh, iron mirror or iron uh, wall or uh, door. Okay. The particles in the sol uh, in crystalline solid will be as it is for long time, like uh, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. There will be corrosion, no doubt, but the particles will be arranged orderly. But in amorphous yeah. solid, what happens? Just take an example of uh, glass. If you have glass door, you have fitted it in your room, but after 10 to 15 years, you will realize that the lower part is becoming thicker after oh. years and years, and the uh, upper part is becoming thinner. That means basically the particles in amorphous solid has tendency to flow, but we cannot see it because it takes time, like 10 years, 15 years, 20 oh. years. So that's why this amorphous solid is known as pseudo solid or super cooled liquid. Is that clear? Okay. okay. Yes. Yes. Now, the third point, which is also very important, melting and boiling point are sharp in crystalline solid. Why it is so? Because the particles in crystalline solid are orderly arranged for long range order. And you can see, if you want to boil it, it will take same energy or same it will take same energy or same temperature for each and every part. Okay. So you can see if uh, you have uh, what you call it, uh, uh, if you have ice, okay? So you okay. need to <laughs> heat it and uh, the temperature will be uh, basically uh, just uh, forget ice if you have item and if you want to boil uh, um, heat it if you want to heat it that means basically if you uh, if you are going to rise the temperature or heat it the temperature will be sharp for the boiling yeah there will be some boiling point for iron too that yeah. boiling point will be sharp that means it will be at 2000 degree centigrade uh, 2000 degree celsius that will be fixed but in yeah. amorphous solid this will be in range like uh, 20 to 30 degree centigrade because the particles some uh, at some place will be highly dense and particles at some place will be very less dense. As you can see, the particles here, as you can see, the particles here are very dense. And after this, you can see some particles are far away from each other. So that oh. will be uh, heated uh, sooner than the previous. Are you getting my point? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So yeah. that's why the melting and boiling point in amorphous solid is basically in range. Now come, okay. uh, come to the next point, which is basically, uh, this is 
क्रिस्टलिन सॉलिड आर एनिसोट्रॉपिक इन नेचर एंड क्रिस्टलिन सॉलिड आर एनिसोट्रॉपिक इन नेचर एंड एमोफो सॉलिड आर आइसोट्रॉपिक इन नेचर so always remember whenever you have term like iso iso means same and mm-hmm. aniso here aniso means basically different so mm-hmm. what is isotropic and anisotropic it is very important to know that anisotropic that means if you are going to measure physical quantity or physical properties or different property of any in different direction you will get different value i am again going to repeat it and just read it to you uh, it will be very easy to understand okay anisotropic in crystal is due to different arrangement of particles along different direction so basically all i want to say is that anisotropic means anisotropic nature of crystalline solid that means if you are going to measure the different properties in anisotropic in different direction you will get different value like if you are going to measure uh, a refractive index in different direction you will get different value in the same crystal whereas if you are going to check i um, uh, this m which is isotropic in nature that means basically uh, different direction same value the oh. refractive index where the value of refractive index, index will be same for different dials is that clear okay. yeah yeah and you have to uh, remember this uh, some example like the example of crystalline solid will be zns quartz nsl etc and uh, okay. example of uh, this amorphous will be rubber glass plastic quartz glass etc okay. is that very good now come to the next point which is very easy to understand i will show you this later okay and mm-hmm. i don't know why it's... wait a minute please okay mm-hmm. now so this is the basic of uh, solid state then we will going uh, we are going to start let me fix it okay so you are going to give the uh, paper in january right the paper yeah, will be in if the first attempt is, attempt is on january yes so let's start this uh, let's see now we are going to divide or classify this crystalline solid this crystalline solid are of two types sorry four types this crystalline okay. solids are of four types to see this crystalline solid r of four types Mm. 
need to share that page only. Then I'll say, <clears throat> okay. See, there are four types of crystal in solid. The first is molecular solid, then ionic solid, then metallic solid, and then covalent or network solid. The okay. first common term in this are solid. All should be in solid. Okay. okay. So first of all, I'm going to start from here. Ionic solid. What is ionic solid? Any ionic compound which exists in uh, which exists in solid, basically, generally, that is called ionic solid, like NaCl, ZNS. And you can take an example okay. of magnesium oxide, which is an ionic compound if exists in solid acid, that is ionic solid. Here, the constituent particles, as you have studied, is ions, will be ions, basically. Okay. Constitu uh, co constituent particles will be ions. When we talk about metallic solid, any metallic compound which exists in solid state. So if you are going for constituent particles, constituent particles will be basically positive ions in a sea of delocalized electrons. Basically what it is, you can call it uh, kernel. Do you know what is kernel? No, no, no. So basically that is cloud of electron. As you know that, Metals have free electrons. Metals have yeah. free electrons. So basically, that is called kernel. And metallic solid or <clears throat> metallic solid has uh, this constituent particles that is positive ions. Basically, we, we are talking about the nucleus. Okay? okay. And if you are going for the example, it will be iron, copper, silver, uh, gold, magnesium, you can take copper, zinc, etc. And covalent or network solid. That is basically constituent particles will be atoms. Constituent particles will be atoms. You have seen what is covalent bond. Do you know what is covalent bond? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sharing of electron. Sharing of electron then bond uh, forms. That is called covalent bond, right? Yes. And if you have uh, seen that, uh, that compound is basically known as covalent compound. So yes. sharing of electron between two atoms. So that's why the constituent particles is atoms and the bond is covalent bond. Example, that is silicon dioxide, which is quartz. This is silicon carbide or carbon or diamond. These are all known as, basically, these are all known as uh, covalent or network solid. Now come to the point, this molecular solid. What is molecular solid? The constituent particles are molecules, first of all. Okay. If a molecule which exists in solid state and satisfy the condition of crystalline solid, that will be molecular solid. These are of three types. These are of three types, polar, non-polar, and hydrogen bonded molecular solid. So the first point is, what is polar? Do you know okay. about polarity? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, like, yeah, I you know polarity. Yes. Like so, negative, uh, yes. Negative if there, there is a, a, uh, you can see. Uh, whenever there will be charge on the compound or the or, or on the on the molecule that is polar, and if yes. there is no charge, that means non-polar. Non -polar. So yeah. any molecule which has yes, very good. Any molecule which have uh, charge. Uh, wait a minute. Any solid, any molecular solid which is charged, that is known as polar molecular solid. Any molecule which is uncharged. That is known as non-polar molecular solid. So is that clear? Yeah. So non-polar, you can see argon, CCl4, carbon tetrachloride. And if you are going for polar, that means HCl or SO2. This will be polar. Do you know how it, it is how it is polar? Yeah, yeah. Uh, H plus and Cl minus uh, Cl is electronegative. Yes, Cl minus there will be Cl negative and then uh, it will be H plus. So that's why it is polar and uh, polar. And can you tell me why CCl4 is not polar since chlorine is more electronegative than carbon, but still it is not polar? Yeah, the vector sum of the dipole like Very cancels good. out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it is a tetrahedral, it has a tetrahedral geometry in which. Uh, uh, I yes. can show you the structure like this is Cl, Cl, 
and this is also CL, and this is also CL, and this is also CL. Only for understanding better, uh, you can see this will attract in opposite direction to this, and this will yes. attract in opposite direction to this. So in this way, they cancel it, uh, cancel out each other, and that's why it is non-polar. Now, can you yeah. tell me anything about hydrogen bond? Hydrogen bonded. Yeah, where where does this hydrogen bond form what is the condition for this hydrogen bond when uh, hydrogen is near to uh, very electronegative atoms like f or oxygen or uh, chlorine yeah. basically there are two conditions the first condition you just uh, uh, told me that it should be very high electronegative value can you yes. tell me about the next condition? So you you just told me that fluorine, oxygen. Is there any other element that forms hydrogen bond? Uh, other than fluorine, oxygen. See, always remember this. Phone. Phone. Sorry, I just I have to write like this. I just I'm not writing like this. It's just okay. okay. Happens here. Uh, yeah. So this is phone, and whenever hydrogen is nearby this phone or uh, or, or nearby fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, yeah. then hydrogen bond will be formed. So the first yeah. condition you have felt, uh, you are just told me that electronegativity that is good, and the second condition is it should be a small. The the um, the site should be a small. The site should be a small. Small. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, nitrogen and chlorine have same electronegativity approximately, but chlorine does not form hydrogen bond. Why? Because chlorine has larger size. And you know oh. that this hydrogen bond and a Van der Waals force of attraction or Van der Waals bonds are very weak. And yeah. if it will have larger size, then force of attraction will be lesser and the bond will be easily broken or the bond will not be formed. Is that clear? That's why this is the second condition comes. A small size oh. should be there. So whenever hydrogen will be uh, nearby fluorine or oxygen or nitrogen, there will be the formation of hydrogen bond. And you can see H2. H2O in ice or H2O in solid is known as hydrogen bonded molecular solid. Is that oh. clear? Yes. Okay. Very good. Mm. Okay, now come to the point here. Okay, so this was only about the types of solid, the slim solid, and all this. Now we are going to introduce a new point that is basically there are some terms that you should know, like this. So, do you know what is lattice? Uh, I think do you know? Yes. I think it's formed when ionic compounds are formed. See, uh, ionic compounds are formed. Okay. See, basically, uh, unit cell, there will be another term that is known as unit cell. So, okay. What is lattice? So basically lattice is 3D arrangement of particles that is called uh, lattice, 3D arrangement. Now I'm going to explain this. It's very easy to see. There is no 3D diagram, okay, no problem. So if you have, if I'm going to, this will be a cube. Yes. Just wait a minute. This is a cube. And when you have a lot of cubes like this, I'm going to show you.
I just cancelled my previous class after knowing this. And this was your first class, so I thought it will be. It's not that much stuff. You will get it easily. Okay. So see, this is a 3D diagram of a crystal, just suppose NaCl or Na2. So if you are going to take a smallest 3D structure in from this, like if you am going to take this cube, so this cube is basically known as lattice. Are you getting my point? Yeah. yeah. So the uh, a regular 3D geometry that is called lattice. So I can define a regular 3D geometry of particles or arrangement is called lattice. So if there are a lot of particles like this, they are in solid state cube or anything, you can pick any one of them that is known as lattice. lattice. Okay. Now we have a point that is known as uh, I have uh, notes of this. Can I share this only for today? Yeah, so yeah. I will not have to write. Actually, yeah. uh, actually, in the class when I write, it will be very better. But for this class only, I have okay. a notes of this student. Please wait. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is only for today's class because we don't have, I don't have any other option. Okay. So you can see that uh, basically I just explained what is lattice. So yeah. lattice is anything which is regularly arranged in 3D or particles that is called lattice and each point in lattice is called lattice point. Now okay. there are 14 possible 3D lattices called Bravia's lattices, called Bravia's lattices. I just show you only the cubic lattices or uh, not cubic lattices. Uh, that is will be basically unit cell that is cubic. You will see there will be 14 Bravias lattices. Is that clear? Bravias is what? Uh... This is the name of a scientist uh, that uh, to honor that scientist. Uh, 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 it okay. was named Bravias lattices. Okay. okay. You will see basically uh, in cubic lattices, uh, in cubic cell, we will have a uh, simple, uh, simple cubic unit cell body centered cubic unit cell face centered cubic unit cell uh, i think you haven't studied this chapter at all right no 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 not this no. okay 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 no problem then. <clears throat> so uh, whenever you have any doubt or anything please let me yeah 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 so see what i want to say is that this is 14 there will be 14 bravias lattices yeah no. There will be a term that is unit cell. What is unit cell? This is also the 3D, a smallest 3D unit which can perform a lattice or which can form a lattice after repetition is called unit cell. Like if uh, if I'm sitting in a building right now, the unit cell will be a brick. Are you getting oh. my point? 
Yeah, yeah. That is the unit cell. Now, unit cell are of two types. One is called hey, primitive is, unit cell. Is the unit cell and the lattice point same? Uh, basically, they are interrelated. If you are going to repeat this unit cell, then yeah. you can see the smallest 3D unit, uh, which can form a lattice after repetition. So if okay. you are going to repeat a unit cell again and again, you will get a lattice. Okay, then lattice point is... Uh... Lattice point is, uh, you can see, what is lattice point. Uh, first okay. of all, <clears throat> this is, uh, there is a brick, that is a yeah. unit cell. If I'm going to uh, make a home in cubical structure, yeah. that, cube, the, that cube will be our lattice. Okay. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah. <clears throat> so yes. after repeat, after we are going to repeat unit cell again and again, we will get a lattice point according to our arrangement. Whether it will be tetrahedral, whether it will be uh, hexagonal, rhombohedral, cubical, or triclinic, monoclinic, anything depending upon your structure or arrangement. Is that clear? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now this unit cell is of two types: primitive and centered unit cell. What is primitive unit cell? Primitive unit cell is also known as simple unit cell. And in our syllabus, we have only cubic. Cubic, in a, a cubic is in our syllabus. There will be seven different types of unit cell. And we need to study more about cubic. Are you getting okay. my point? Yeah. Now come to the point. Unit cell are of two types. Primitive or centered unit cell. Centered unit cell are of four types. Face centered, body centered, and center. Three types, sorry. Three types. Okay. Face centered, body centered, and center. Now see. What is primitive unit cell or simple unit cell? So basically, when the atoms are arranged at the corners, in this, atoms are only arranged at corners. When, 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 whenever I will talk about simple or primitive unit cell, that means... Uh, in the unit cell, the atoms will be situated at corner only. Are you getting my point? Okay. This is the position. When I when I uh, when I tell you uh, uh, primitive or simple, that means the atoms are at corners. And okay. since we have only cubic in our syllabus, so we will only think about this right now. Okay. okay. So what is primitive or unit cell? Atoms are present at corners only. At corners only. So if I'm going to ask you, if you have a cube, if you have a cube and all atoms are present at corners only. So how many atoms are present in this cube? Can you tell me? Uh, it will be eight. It will be eight. Yeah. That is completely wrong answer because that is uh, basically right answer according to you. <laughs> yeah. And according to me, because I just showed you only the one cube but this unit cell will be present in a crystal and there yeah. will be a lot of other cube that will be arranged that means basically uh, this cube will have another cube wait a minute like this yeah like this it is not only in, uh, it is on, not only it is present in this there will be another cubes like this are you getting yeah. my point yeah. So this will be in 3D structure. Now, what I want to say is that you have a studied flux, right? Uh, flux. In, uh, flux in physics, electro, uh, electric. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So tell me, if I'm going to put a charge Q on the corner, Q yeah. on the corner, what will be the flux? This charge uh, will be divided by, we will take a masonry a structure like this and yeah. make a symmetry, right? Yes. Okay. So five flux five and Q is yes. the charge, right? Yeah. And it will be divided into eight part Q eight, yeah. upon eight epsilon. Yeah. Why it is so? Because this charge will be divided by four other cubes. Uh, sorry, eight other cubes, seven other cubes. Total eight cubes will be there. Yes. Are you getting my point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you can see this, if there is a uh, ball or an atom, this will be, this ball will be divided by 
this cube and there will be another cube above this then there will be the, uh, there will be cube on the right hand side and there will be cube on the right hand side of this cube yes. and these are four cubes and again yeah. since this is in 3d we will have cube on top of each yes so yes. four on four that will be eight so basically when i am asking you how many atoms are present so basically eight corners are there eight corners yeah. are there and if you have one atom at one corner that one atom uh, one by eight part of that atom will contribute in this cube only are you getting my point oh okay, okay. that atom will be divided into eight equal parts of uh, eight equal parts of diff in different cubes okay. nearby that so in simple cubic unit cell we will have only one atom in spite of eight corners or eight atoms arranging in this only one atom will be there yes are you getting my point yeah, so that's why number of atoms one by eight one cube uh, one atom will uh, give only one by eight part of it into it that's why <laughs> one and question one. has been asked that <laughs> what is the rank of simple cubic unit cell rank means basically number of atoms per unit cell so whenever there will be question what is the rank of simple unit cubic cell so it will be one, one. and whenever one. there will be question like simple that means simple or primitive that means atoms are situated at corners on yes now see what is body centered unit cell or we call it body centered cubic unit cell because we just need to study about cube so okay. basically in body center cubic unit cell the atoms are present at corners as well as body center so as we already know in a cube the atoms uh, the contribution of atoms present at corners will be only one because one. you can see number of atoms at corners and at body center so 1 by 8 into 8 that will be one atom and yeah. we know that in a cube there will be only one body center so due to this body center we have another one atom so total number of atoms in bcc will be 2 or the rank of bcc will be 2 okay yes now the next question is also very easy what is face centered unit cell or fcc face centered cubic unit cell here the atoms are present at corners and at faces or uh, faces or okay so at corners we know that one one atom that is fixed is that clear yeah. yes yes now when we talk about faces so can you tell me what is the electric flux due to a charge present on one of the face of this cube so in flux what we do we just take imaginary shape like this yes And since this cube is divided into two uh, two cube so it will be q upon 2 epsilon right yeah two yes or we can uh, go by chemistry also like if you have any atom that is present on the face on the face and you will have since it is in 3d we have another cube, we have yeah. another uh, cube uh, so basically you can see this will be divided into two parts two. that means yes. we have six faces we have six, six faces. faces and if you are, if you have one atom at the faces that will donate only half part of that so 1 by 2 into 2 six that will be three atom so total okay. number of atoms in fcc will be four one is due to corners and three Con. is due to face yes. so rank okay. that means uh, number of atoms per unit cell of fcc will be four atoms is that clear okay yeah clear now see yeah. there is another that is end centered unit cell what is end centered unit cell you can see this this the atoms are present at corners and due to corners one atom is there right yeah and and center means any two opposite faces atoms present at any two opposite faces and we know that if you have a atom at face only that will give half part of that and you are going to uh, put two atoms at two faces that means one from half that means one from half then we will get one, one. total one so number of atoms or uh, rank in ecc that means and centered unit cell will be two atoms Mm, yeah. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah, clear. Now we have a special type of unit cell that is hexagonal unit cell. 
hexagonal units and there will be a very uh, surprising point that this atom has three body centered atom it will have three body centered atom okay just keep it in mind uh, i will show you in the next class how it goes or if you are going to see in ncert you will see there will be three atoms in body center mm -hmm. so here we are also going to calculate uh, the rank of hexagonal unit cell so first of all we need to know where the atoms are situated where the atoms are situated so atoms are situated at corners first of all corners body center that i already told you three atoms yeah. will be at body center and face center that is very easy if you have any atom at face that will be divided by two ha ah, yeah. that will give this atom half uh, this yes, cell half and that cell half ah. so it's very easy to understand yeah. this point to wait a minute what okay so i'm going to explain number of atoms at body center i just told what it is number of atoms at body center three now number of atoms at corners see in cube it is divided by eight atoms that why we multiplied eight by eight into one by eight in hexagonal cubic unit cell we have 12 corners six downward six upward 12 yeah. corners and yeah. from each corner one atom is divided only by six other hexagonal unit cell six other oh. hexagonal so that's why we multi uh, that means basically one atom will be divided in six hexagon so 1 by 6 into 12 so at corners due to corners we have two atoms due to body center we have three atoms and number of atoms at faces there will be two faces this and upper and uh, top and bottom only so 1 by 2 into 2 that will be one atom. Oh. we will not take the uh, lateral yeah, face only we will take top up. and bottom yeah Uh, are you getting my point? So yeah. the rank that means basically number of atoms per unit cell will be basically six atoms. Okay. Is that clear? Yes, clear. Yeah. So it's very easy. But uh, what we need to do is uh, focus on solving different types of questions. The theory is uh, generally uh, very easy, but the okay. application for the JNS you need to do. A lot of hard work. <laughs> so okay. Let's just start. Radius of atom, or the topic was basically relation between edge length. As you know that I just told you that uh, basically there will be cubic unit cell. So that's why we are talking about edge length, and the atoms yeah. are spherical in shape. So atoms will be at corners. Atoms will be at faces. Atoms will be at body center. So we are going to find the relation between edge length of cube and the radius of unit cell radius oh. of atom okay now see simple cubic unit cell as you know that the in simple unit cubic cell uh, in simple unit cubic cell as you know that the atoms are present only at corners so you can oh. see the atoms will be present like this and let's say as you know that the Edge length of cube is equal. All are equal. Let's say a yeah. a length. So all are equal length. So the length between this and this will be a a. That will be equal to you can see r and r. That will be equal to two r. Yeah. So r is equal to a by two. Simple cubic unit cell has a very easy concept or very easy relation between the edge length of cube. And the radius of atom, that is, radius of atom is half of its length of cube. Yes. Is that clear? Yeah. This is very easy. Now see, what about face center cubic unit cell? Since we are talking about face center, and as we know that in face center, the atoms are at faces and at corners. So I just draw a diagram. According to this face, you can see this is the face atom. This is yeah. the corner atom and this is also the corner atom uh, is that clear now yeah. the point is that you know that this all atom coming on the diagonal or lie on the diagonal so i am going to take this as 2r and this atom is half 
side this and that <clears throat> so this will be also i'm going to take r and this will be r uh, so the diagonal of the face diagonal of the cube will be 4r yes or no face of yes. face diagonal will be 4r so i am going to apply pythagoras theorem only to this part only to this part are you getting my point because yeah. this is 90 degree so 4r square that means hypotenuse square is equal to base square plus perpendicular square so 4r yeah. square will be a square plus a square yeah. because its length will be equal so we just solved it 16r square is equal to 2a square 2 will be cancelled uh, 2 can uh, 2 will cancel 16 8r square will be equal to a square so a square will be equal to 8r square so a will be equal to 2 root 2r so we need to yeah. focus on the result or the uh, or we need to focus on the relation between a and r in fcc the relation can be also written as r will be equal to a upon 2 root 2 yes and if there will be answer like this that is correct but generally when we have a root number in denominator we rationalize so okay. can you tell me after rationalize okay sir can uh, just rationalize it and let me know the yeah yeah Uh, wait, sir. Rationalizing factor is two root two, and uh, you add, you multiply both sides. Or I forgot. We just we just uh, do this uh, root two root two. Yeah, root two root two. Okay. So uh, it will be you can see. Yeah, root two a by four. Yeah, root two a by four, right? Yeah, yeah. It will be a root two by four. So yes. question, uh, the option can be written as like this or this or this. So be okay. careful. Okay. So see about body centered cubic unit cell. So what is body centered cubic unit cell? So you have seen that. You already uh, you already know that uh, the atoms present in the body centered cubic cell is at corners and at body center so uh, you can see the atoms are at corners and the atoms is uh, atom is at body center body. and this is at corner so you can see the again the, this is body diagonal the previous one was only the face face diagonal but this is body diagonal this is body diagonal okay. so we are going to apply uh, pythagoras theorem like you have studied it in Uh, vector, right? Uh, have you yeah. studied this chapter, Max? So yeah. you can see this, this, and this. No, wait a minute. Sorry, just made it wrong. So this will be the body diagonal, yeah. and this, this, this. So we know that a, a, a. This, the square, uh, the sum, uh, the square of sum of this will be equal to the square of this. So yeah. in this way, a square plus a square plus a square will be equal to four r square, and in this way, a square will be sixteen r square by three, and then a is equal to four r by root three, and in this way, this is the relation. So are you writing or are you taking a screenshot or anything? Yeah, I'm writing. I'm writing. Yes. Okay. So then, then, then that's good. Yeah. So basically, it's not a big chapter. Yeah. It's a not that much big. You just need to. Uh, do question. So, uh, which books uh, you are going to use for your practice? Uh, books like books yeah, NCERT. NCERT. That's good. Apart from NCERT, do you have uh, any book that is for especially JNMs? Uh, 
no book like uh, there's like some book like like caps uh, or something what you just said uh okay i i don't have actually don't have okay okay, okay no problem so <clears throat> so uh, do you uh, generally study on laptop or on uh, in uh, a book and do that yeah yeah computer we, yeah generally use computer okay okay no problem i will be sending some books that will have only question okay that will help okay yes so do you have pyq's book previous year's question uh no 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 okay i will be sending this book first okay so sir number uh, you will get it okay okay you will get it. are yeah. you done with this uh yeah i wrote that yes okay so see what i told you is that there are seven types of unit cells and uh, on the one we have to talk about or we have to study about the cubic unit cell and what we just studied is that the uh, unit cell cubic unit cell like uh, the number of atoms or the rank of scc simple cubic unit cell fcc face centered cubic unit cell and dcc that means body centered cubic unit cell are you getting my point yeah yeah and this scc the point we have written scc that means simple cubic unit cell this is fcc that means face centered cubic unit cell bcc okay. that means body centered cubic unit cell these are called dravia's lattices these are called dravia's lattices okay. and there are 14 dravia's lattices and seven types of unit cell okay and these dravia's lattices comes from these seven unit cell okay okay Okay. there will be a unit cell that is known as triclinic unit cell or triclinic unit cell and that triclinic unit cell is the most asymmetrical unit cell in all of this seven okay most asymmetric and the most symmetrical you can think about is this cubic unit cell cube yeah okay okay, okay. now see seven types of unit cell i already told you cubic tetragonal orthorhombic monoclinic triclinic hexagonal rhombohedral these are seven types of unit cell and their parameters are given as this so you can see the cubic a is equal to b is equal to c alpha is equal to beta is equal to 90 degree alpha is equal to beta is equal to 90 degree and gamma is also equal to 90 degree come to the triclinic a is not equals to b is not equals to c alpha is not equals to beta is not equals to gamma is not equals to 90 degree so okay. uh, once upon a time there will be uh, there was a question from this like it was given a uh, tetragonal and uh, the option was uh, a is equal to b is equal to c alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma so you have okay. to uh, focus on this i will give you a, a mnemonic of this that will help you to okay okay uh, uh, remember it. now what i told you about gravia's lattice c this cubic unit cell has three gravia's lattices scc bcc fcc pcc we just studied it is not part of cubic unit cell and centered are you getting my point yeah 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 so see there is three now come to this point tetragonal it has two scc and bcc only orthorhombic okay. scc bcc ecc fcc it has four okay now monoclinic it has two scc ecc yeah triclinic it has only one scc hexagonal it has mix only one it has mix we have only studied mix okay. rhombohedral it has only one now i am going to add this 1 2 3 2 5 4 9 2 11 plus 3 this is 14 oh, bravias lattices okay got it now yes yes so you have been given in ncert to this okay okay can we move to the next part what what uh, you, uh, in ncert it's not given so please write it are you done okay. with this this part only i'll be yeah, yeah, coming right. from your side please do.
Uh, shall I take screenshot of this and then write it later? Yes, yes, you can. Okay. Just wait for a minute. Okay. So this SCC, BCC, Bravias, Lattices and all, you are aware of this, right? Right? Yeah. Will you be comfortable if my video will be off? Yeah, no problem, no problem. Okay. For a while only. Yes. Now see. Should I give you a question? It's not good to wait a minute. Now the next topic is basically packing efficiency. Do you know what is packing efficiency? No, no, no. You don't know? No. Yeah, it's not chemistry, Tom. Uh, if I will ask you what is your efficiency? Oh, okay. Uh, are you getting my point? So this is packing efficiency. That means you are going to buy some books and you are uh, not books or you can buy anything. Like if you are going to buy some ball, okay? football okay. and take a, a big basket or bag trolley and you are yeah. going to fit some of your football in that trolley so in that case what will be the efficiency so basically <clears throat> efficiency is something that that will be defined by if i have taken if my class uh, the volume of my classroom is 100 meter cube. Is that clear? Okay. Yes. And if there will be uh, a student sitting in the, uh, uh, or if there is anything that will be a, a only 90 meter cube, that will all occupy this. So, what is my efficiency? What is the efficiency of this? 90%? Yeah, 90. Okay, okay, like that. Yes. Are you getting my point now? Yeah, yeah I got it. So, as you know that atoms are spherical in shape, right? Yeah. And the lattice or the unit cell is cubic. Yeah. So it's must that there will be some space that will be left because uh, if you have something in a spherical shape, like uh, uh, you have a box. Wait a minute. It's where it is. Okay. You have a box, right? And you are going to fill this box with laddu like this. Yeah. So you know that there will be some space that will not be covered, right? Yeah, in the corner. Yeah. Yes, you can see the uh, basically this this part. This is the space left that yeah. we cannot use, right? Yeah. And with uh, due to this, due to this. The efficiency will be decreasing, not hundred percent, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you have something in a square shape, that uh, then the efficiency will be more. Yes, yes. Hmm. So this is what we are going to study: efficiency, packing efficiency. So okay. first of all, what is packing efficiency? How we are going to do it? It's very easy. Packing efficiency is volume of atoms upon volume of units in which atoms are present. Okay. Yeah. And if you are going to multiply it by 100, the answer will come in percent. Right? Percentage. Okay. For percentage, we multiply it by 100. Like if you want to calculate the percentage of your marks, given uh, obtained marks upon total marks into 100. Yeah. Okay. And if you are going to only do obtained marks divided by total marks or full marks, that will only give the ratio. Fraction. Ratio. Yeah. fraction that will give fraction and if you are going to multiply this fraction with 100 you will get you will okay. get percent so first of all packing efficiency for simple cubic in itself which is very easy so for uh, for packing efficiency we have a formula volume of total atoms upon volume of unit cell into 100 so what will be the volume of atoms since atoms are in a spherical uh, atoms are in a spherical uh, shape 
the volume of a sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube yes and what will be the volume of cubic unit cell yeah a cube. yeah and we just assume that a is the is length of q and we know the rank that means atom per unit cell of scc yes. will is one 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 so the total volume occupied in scc will be 4 by 3 pi r cube into one because only one atom is there yeah and divided by volume of cube is a cube yes yes or no now yeah, yeah. what we need to do here is we use we will use relation between a and r relation between edge length and radius so we already know that a will be equal to 2r right 2r yeah. in scc so here we just put the value 2r whole cube that will be equal to 8 r r cube 8r cube yes, yes or no 8r cube yes. and in in, in numerator you can see 4 by uh, 4 by 3 pi r cube so this r cube will be cancelled by this r cube 8 yeah. will uh, be cancelled by two times and you can see that 3 will be here so 3 to the 6 so pi upon 6 if you are going to divide it it will give you 0.52 and due to or in scc the packing efficiency will be 52% or you can see the packing efficiency will be 52.4% if you are going to divide it more and more okay so if the packing efficiency is 52% what will be the void percent oh uh, yeah it will be like 100 minus 52 which is uh, yes, 48 that is 48% right yes now come to the point of body center it's very easy body centered yeah. cubic unit cell you know how many atoms present in body centered cubic unit yeah. cell two atoms two hmm. atoms two atoms so you are going to find the atom number of sorry volume of atoms volume of one atom is this and volume of unit cell is this and you know the rank of bcc will be 2 yes. yes or no due to yeah. uh, uh, the atoms are present at body center as well as corners so packing efficiency will be uh, 4 by 3 pi r cube and before that i am going to multiply it by 2 because there are two atoms and this 3 will come to denominator yes or no is yeah. there any doubt yeah now a cube we are we are going to again use the relation between a and r so you know the relation between a and r in body centered cubic unit cell that will be basically 4r upon root 3 so it will be yeah. uh, we just put the value and we will get an answer root 3 pi by 8 and when you are yeah. going to divide it you will get this see i can write it like this 4 by 3 pi r cube and there will be 2 into a cube a cube uh, just let me know the well uh, let me know the uh, relation between a and r in bcc yeah it is uh, root 3 by 4 r right 4 r by root 3 or root 3 by 4 yeah yeah 4 r by root 3 sorry 4 r by root 3 so 4 r by root 3 any yani 4 r uh, that means 4 r cube and root 3 cube here that's why i wrote root 3 cube that means root 3 into root 3 that will be three. and there is root 3 left is that clear so when you are going to yeah. divide it you will get an answer 0.68 that is fraction and if you are going to uh, packing efficiency in percentage that means 68% yes and what is the void yeah it will be 32 yes percent is that clear yeah clear yeah. yeah. okay very good now come to the next that is packing efficiency of face centered unit cell fcc face centered unit cell. again the same concept 4 by 3 pi r cube now you know that the rank of fcc is z that will be equal to 4 right yeah so this Volume of total volume of atoms will be four into four by three pi r cube. Yes. Four into four by three pi r cube. So if I'm going to put the value and uh, the relation between a and r using the relation between a and r, it will be basically a is equal to two root two r. So we will get 
74 percent and the voids will be 26 yeah, 26 so the best efficiency we are getting from face fcc centered. or face center in fcc is yes. that clear yes so it's uh, the question has been asked what is the packing efficiency of fcc or bcc in term and the option was given in terms of pi so you have to be careful about this oh. pi also are you getting my point yeah yeah so uh, once it has been asked what is the packing efficiency of SCC and the option was pi by 6, pi by 3, pi by 4, pi by 5. So the yeah. answer was pi by So you have to be careful about this also. Not only yeah. this 52%. Or you can do that also, but it will take time. And this yeah. competitive exam is all about time management, right? Yeah. yeah. If we are going to a study like this, when the chapter will be completed. <laughs> yes, wait a minute. So all you need to do is uh, practice question. So I should give some question. Wait a minute. Okay, am I audible? Yeah, yeah audible, yeah. Okay. okay, so whatever I just taught you, I'm going to give some questions. Okay. Just think about, uh, can you see the screen? Yeah, I can see. Okay, thank you. So the question is, basically this question number one. An element has a body-centered cubic structure with the cell edge 288 picometer the atomic radius okay <clears throat> yeah this Yeah, it will be uh, root 3 by 4 to 88 picometer. Very good. Let's go. Wait a minute. Question number 22. Okay. Yeah, it is uh, B, 32 percent. Body sent, 68 yeah. percent sent. Very good. Okay, question number 21. 21. Question number 21. Okay. 